What's up guys, DZ Fear, and today's deck was voted on by my Facebook group. Um, if you want to check that out, it's going to be linked in the description. Basically, I put up um, videos when I post them, I put up articles when I post them. Um, but one thing I've started doing over there is posting up like two different deck ideas um, and having you guys actually vote on which one uh, would be posted next. Uh, Insectors won that vote, so we're going to be profiling them today. My build is kind of all over the place, but it works pretty good, so let's take a look. Um, and your hardest matchup with this deck is basically Cosmo. Um, surprisingly, the uh, Pendulum and uh, Monarch matchups aren't really that bad. It's really just Cosmo. So if you're going to decide to play a deck like a Locals or even a Regional to get your invite, I would heavily suggest siding against Cosmo pretty hard, um, probably with Cyro Dragons. Um, but anyway, let's break right into it. So we have three Centipede, that's not really surprising. Uh, two Ladybug, I played around with three, but I really don't want to open multiples, um, so we played two. Uh, one Dragonfly, one Hornet, one Gigamantis, one Hopper. Um, those are all pretty standard. I do like the Hopper over the third Ladybug, because Hopper is like not actually terrible by itself, because it has 1,700 attack points. Um, we're also playing three Howling Insects. This is going to be the Verdant Sanctuary build. Howling Insect's really cool. So basically when it's destroyed by battle, you can special summon an insect with 1500 attack or less. So that can get either itself, Dragonfly, I guess Ladybug, and then Hornet. Um, so basically the combo with Verdant Sanctuary, um, which is a continuous spell card that we'll get to in a second. Um, when Verdant Sanctuary is on the field, when a insect monster is destroyed, you can add a an insect monster with the same level as the destroyed monster. So basically what you do is you summon Howling Insect, crash it into your opponent's monster th with all three of them, and then search out uh, like a, a Dragonfly, a Hornet, and a Centipede. So that's pretty cool. Um, and most people like won't know what the fuck it is, so yeah, it's pretty good. Um, but anyway, we're playing one Mathematician. Sadly, it's limited. And then I'm actually playing a Rota in this deck, so we're playing one Armageddon Knight, one Photon Thrasher. So, this might seem a little weird already. Um, get the math mention out of here. So basically, um, I didn't want to play multiple Armageddon Knights because you usually have way too many normal summons in your hand. Um, so I like just playing one Rota and then one Armageddon to kind of act as like two copies but without clogging your hand. And then Photon Thrasher is for when you like have a Rota and then a bunch of monsters in hand so you can special summon this guy. Um, like you can make your Insectors level 4 with Ladybug so you can usually just uh, overlay with this dude. Um, and he's a, a light, which is important, because we're playing BLS, um, which might seem a little strange, but as we get deeper into the deck profile, you'll see that we're playing lots of lights. Um, I obviously just want, like, a Saki card to put more damage on board. Um, so some of the lights we're playing are Veilers, which are paired with Max C to draw into. Uh, I talked about in the last video why I like Veiler right now more than Ghost Ogre in the main. Um, Veilers is pretty good against Monarchs, um, as well as Pendulums and just a variety of Rogue decks, and it's a light monster. So that's pretty helpful. Um, so one of the weirder choices we're playing is we actually are playing artifacts. Um, not my usual like nine card artifact lineup, or I guess it'd be uh, I, don't, I don't know if it's nine cards. It might be eight. It might be I don't know ten. Who who knows? It doesn't matter. Anyway, we're playing just the three artifacts: um, three two sight and one morale talk. Um, basically, I figured out with this deck the problem is is that you actually just lose to Twin Twister. Um, if you don't like have cards like artifacts. So by playing artifacts, either your opponents can get punished for twin twistering back row blindly, or um, they're just gonna not twin twister you because they're like afraid of the artifacts. And also these combo with the call of the hauntings that we were gonna play anyway. For the spells, we're playing three Vernet Sanctuary. This is a card I mentioned before. So basically just when any of your insects die, you can add an insect with the same level to your hand. Um, Pretty much all of your insects are level 3. I guess there's some like random uses, like if a ladybug dies, you can search a max C and then vice versa. Um, but mainly, it's using these to either search out like a centipede if your centipede dies, or like a dragonfly if your centipede dies, or like crashing howling insects and searching insectors is probably the most useful um, part of this card. We're also playing two sword. Um, I, th I think this speaks for itself, but yeah, sword is just important. Um, Two sometimes clogs. I know a lot of Insector players um, are kind of on the fence about playing more than one, but I like two because I feel like for some of the combos, you really just want that second one. Um, we're playing two Creature Swap. So this is cool because it's an out to the Cosmo ships, but it's also cool because you can give them Howling Insects and then like plus a billion off of it. So I like Creature Swap right now, especially in this deck. Um, one Foolish Burial to send 
our Hornet to the Grave or Ladybug, one Rota to search out our Warriors, uh, one Twin Twister. So I played around with like one of these, I played around with like zero of these, and I played with three of them. I tried uh, playing Storm as well, but I think just one of these is in the main, in the main works fine. There aren't a lot of like real back row cards around right now, so you don't really need Twin Twister stuff. But you, I mean, obviously you want to like side deck more copies. Right now, I think one is fine. And then one soul, char soul charge, because you can do some really stupid shit with this card. Um, like you can basically like blow up their entire field and like create a strong board as well, um, which is something that like Insectors really couldn't do when they first came out because there weren't really great defensive rank fives. Um, and then our traps are just three call the haunted. These combo with the artifacts as well as the Insectors. Um, yeah. And then three Sanctum to bring out those artifacts. So that's it for the main deck. It uh, it, it has a lot more options than I think normal Insectors would have. And I think that's really what I wanted. Um, losing two Mathematician on the most recent ban list uh, really sucked. So you kind of have to experiment. Anyway, on to the extra deck. Um, so one Giga Brilliant, which is light, which is cool, but also just important. Uh, one Levier for when you... You can do some like really stupid stuff where you like banish into Dragonfly for BLS and then bring back a Levier. Um, and then we're playing uh, a, Levi a Leviathan and a Alucard. Admittedly, these should probably be a Dante and the Phantom Knight Sky. But like honestly guys, I hate rank 3 decks. I just hate rank 3s in general. Um, so I don't have those cards. But uh, probably should play Dante and the Phantom Knight Sky. Uh, if you have them, but I don't really play rank three decks. I play rank four decks almost exclusively, so I don't have a lot of the uh, rank threes that are like expensive because I don't really care. Um, one nightmare shark, pretty cool. Mech equipped is a light. Um, I feel like I should mention that, but also just good for playing through back row. Um, our rank fours are Castell, uh, Dweller, and then Diamond Dire Wolf. This card's cool because you can like push through back row and then like soul charge. I think that's a cool play. Um, for our rank fives, we have Insector Exa Stag. Um, this guy is just really great, like, I don't know, I wasn't playing him the last time I played this deck because of extra deck space, but he's honestly really helpful. Um, Pleiades, because we can make him with the artifacts, Shark Fortress for OTKs, Volgosaurus for similar reasons, um, and then Guy Charger with Volgosaurus, and then one artifact, Durandal. Um, this fixes your hands, too, like, if you draw, just draw, like, aids, you can Durandal your hand back, um, which is pretty neat. Yeah, and you can make rank fives a lot easier in this deck because of the artifacts, you just need, like, a Ladybug Engrave and like a Centipede and then any artifact or like a Call of the Haunted or like whatever. Um, but hopefully you guys enjoy the deck profile. Make sure to check out the Facebook page to vote on the next deck profile and I will see you guys later. Goodbye.